back in June 2018, I was in Japan for three weeks as part of a study tour at the tail end of my master studies. It was an awesome, amazing and exhaustive trip through three Japanese universities, business tours and also cultural visits. This was only the second time I'd ever been to Japan, but it's the first time that I had been visiting in a business or a study capacity. I'll post a link in the description if you want a more exhaustive overview. But if you get the chance to attend a study tour to Japan in the future, especially once those borders reopen, I'd highly recommend you look into it. While the schedule was tight, thanks to a lot of planning, I managed to squeeze in some nerd shopping. So much so that I had to post most of it home in the end. So why wait until now to open it? Well, between fatherhood, finishing up a master's degree and working full time, I let the nerd room kind of pile up with too much stuff. And so I used this nerd splurge as a bit of an incentive to finally clean everything up. So true to my word, I finally got everything back in order. So now I can explore this 37 kilos of weeb shopping guilt free. Since it's been well over two years, there were a lot of surprises in the mix. While console games dominate my nerd shopping, I've also got some arcade hardware, some toys, figures, manga, and a little bit of merch as well too. Impressively, nothing really got damaged. This is despite the initial surface mail postage run, and then sitting stacked in the study since they arrived back home. So we're talking a few years. So as this B-roll is showing, I used whatever I had access to when I packed everything up. So plastic and paper bags, newspaper, tape, and bubble wrap, it was all in there. I even found some notepaper I used to cushion some stuff as well. I just took whatever I got. If you find yourself posting stuff home while you're visiting Japan, I'd recommend checking out the detailed guide we have on the Anime Inferno website, which I'll link to in the description as well. While I was originally thinking of recording all the unboxing of stuff one by one, but I don't think I'm quite entertaining enough to make that worthwhile. So instead, I'm going to talk over some quick cuts of everything to keep it all going at a solid pace. So let's get started. So first up are some magazines that I picked up. You'll see I flicked through some random gear I found in Akihabara initially, but the better stuff follows. So on my first day in Kyoto, I wandered around to a nearby 7-Eleven to grab some cash. And while I was there, I picked up the current issue of Weekly Famitsu, as well as a Weekly Shonen Jump. The issue of Nakayoshi, which is still sealed with all the merch intact, was from a trip to Animate in Ikibukuro. Next time I go to Japan, I'll try to add some other gaming, manga, and anime mags to the mix as well too. So next up are the toys. I finally picked up a few box Transformers masterpiece toys, starting out with this hot rod, which is complete uh, with all of his crazy accessories, including the fishing rod. I was super excited about bringing home some Transformers, especially the big box ones that we'll see at the end of this section. I also found one of the Virtual Fighter Figmas I've been wanting for ages in Akihabara. Same with the Revoltech Ava Unit 1, which looks really, really cool in the store. I remember thinking about grabbing some Macross stuff and a few other things while I was there, but I was worried about posting them home safely. I don't have a stack of figures, toys, or statues around the place at home, but it was awesome wandering through Ami Ami, Suru, and some of the other places while I was there. Oh, and uh, rounding out the toys and merch is this cool card cup of Sakura character stand thingy of Kero-chan. Now it's arcade time. Not a massive haul, but I grabbed some gear to use in my Astro City cab at home. First up are a few Naomi GD-ROM titles I snapped up for a really nice price. While I can net boot these in my net dim, I still really enjoy playing original games on my hardware, even if it's less convenient than other solutions. The CPS2 boards are a real highlight though. X-Men Children of the Atom was a relatory fighting game when I first played it in 95, so it's great to have a PCB of it. I also have a soft spot for Pocket Fighter as well. This one is missing the label, but the store demoed it on their super gun before packing it up, so it's all good. They also threw in plenty of repro gear, which I thought was a really nice touch. Starting off with the retro games is Castlevania on the MSX. I actually haven't picked up an MSX yet, but I splurged in this cart when I found it. This way, when I finally get off my ass and pick up an MSX for myself, I'll have something interesting to play on it. Now, Famicom games. I was more of a Sega kid growing up, so my knowledge of Famicom games aren't quite as good as the Master System or for many of the other consoles that followed on from Sega, Sony, and Nintendo. So for this trip, I prioritized titles I wanted, but didn't already have in my collection like Popeye and Ice Climbers, and then I picked up some other titles based on, you know, just the developer or the publisher. That's the reason why there's a lot of Capcom and Konami titles in here. It's not for lack of love for the NES because I really enjoyed the system's library, but I was short on time when I was able to squeeze in a shopping trip between lectures and other commitments, so I had to compromise accordingly. No regrets from here though, and while we're a long way from the time when you pick up buckets of amazing Famicom games for 50 yen, I was really happy with my choices, though some of these carts needed a super thorough cleaning afterwards. Seriously, they were really gross, and I've cleaned hundreds of carts over the years. 
Next is the PC Engine. There's not really much here, just the Ninja Warriors and PC Engine 2 on Hue Card. I would have liked some more Hue Cards to add to my pile at home, but I got distracted by other systems, and cheap PC Engine stuff's a bit hard to come by these days. Next up are the PC Engine CD games though. In this case, I kinda just jumped at a whole bunch of stuff as long as it wasn't an obscure RPG or too expensive. So nothing mind blowing here, but I'm happy with what I brought home. For the Mega Drive games, I picked up a mixture of boxed and unboxed stuff. One big highlight was a copy of Bare Knuckle 3, also known as Streets of Rage 3, from Mandarake and Akiba. I'm pretty confident this is one of the most expensive games I picked up in this trip at a bit over 10,000 yen. Thankfully it was in immaculate complete condition and the store was easy enough to get to from where I was staying so it all worked out. Another great pickup was grabbing box copies of the Fantasy Star games. These all had the manuals and maps as well which I was super excited about. The Fantasy Star games are personal favourites of mine from back in the day. So it's nice to have these Japanese copies to complement my PAL and US copies. I also snapped up a few Mega CD titles as well, with my highlight being a lovely box copy of the Ninja Warriors, which is a great port and features an amazing arranged Red Book soundtrack. I actually forgot I bought this one, and so I was really surprised when I found it while I was unboxing everything. I grabbed a couple of random Game Boy games from Book Off as well. Nothing too crazy or interesting here, I think. I just focused on titles that were recognisable based on the cart stickers. Now if Book Off were throwing stuff up for 100 yen each, I probably would have grabbed a whole heap of stuff though. Next is the other 16-bit beast which I came home with a lot of titles for. While I'm a Sega kid at heart, I really love the SNES, and boxed and loose carts are plentiful for decent prices in Japan. And in the end the SNES probably wins the prize in terms of sheer volume of titles I sent home. I went into the trip with a targeted wishlist for the SNES and I found a lot of success. The big difference for the SNES between my last trip and this one are the amount of box games I picked up which was a lot of fun. The highlights for me were Sailor Moon Another Story and Sega Condenser Su 3. I bought two copies of the latter as I found a fancy one later on in the trip, although I think the nicer one was close to 4000 yen so it was a bit more expensive. You'll see some other RPGs in here as well. For these titles I'm thinking of desoldering the mask ROMs and installing fan translated code instead so I can play them in English on original hardware. My Japanese is very poor and I don't quite have the time and persistence I used to have as a teenager to play through RPGs in Japanese anymore so I'm thinking this might be a fun exercise and I can always put back the original mask ROMs down the line. You'll see a lot of loose cuts here as well. For cartridge based systems I'm happy for loose games if the price is right or if I'm not being too obsessive about the game. But for disc based games I'm really picky and only like to pick up boxed versions, preferably with a manual. I don't think there's anything too unusual or rare in this mix, at least nothing that stands out and certainly nothing too expensive. The boxed Wario and Mario was a surprise find though. I picked that up at Ojimakan in Kyoto along with a lot of other reasonably priced games. I was happy to grab Rockman 7 on cartridge though and I'm looking forward to playing Panic in Nakayoshi Land. I don't quite know what to expect out of the Mohoji and Guda Guda games either considering that the anime and the manga are parodies of old video games but they weren't expensive so you know I picked them up. Otherwise it's a decent selection of fun SNES games that manages to fill some holes in the collection back at home. Sorry for the poorly focused Cyberbots Fancy Pants Edition Saturn shot. Anyway, I adore the Saturn and I've been a massive fanboy since I bought my original PAL console back in 96. I've got a decent collection of Saturn titles already so this trip was more around filling some gaps identified in my wish list and picking up some titles I sold off at various stages of maintaining my games. Highlights here were the Ava games which literally cost me under 50 yen each, Rockman 8, the Saturn port of Waku Waku 7 which I always wanted to play back when the 1 meg gram cart conversions were a big deal. Well I'm still chasing down a cart for my MVS, the prices are climbing again so I'm hoping this will tide me over in the interim. Speaking of fighters, I also rebought Samurai Shodown 4. I also threw in a few other fighting games I was after back in the 90s including Street Fighter the Movie, Samurai Shodown 3, Savaki, Vampire Hunter and also Street Fighter Collection. Again, nothing too unusual here, just titles I felt looked interesting. 
back in 2012 when I was in Japan, I bought a lot of PS1 titles as I didn't have that many at home and they were being cleared out at crazy prices in places like Book Off and Softmap and Geo. While the price and availability of PS1 games are different now, they're still much easier to find and are generally cheaper than Saturn games. The highlight here is Marvel Super Heroes, which I mistakenly bought in place of the Saturn one because I was running short of time and clearly I panicked without looking at it properly. Japanese N64 stuff is next, and I'll be honest, I bought a lot of these because they were cheap. I don't have a lot of love and nostalgia for the N64 outside some of the core titles like Mario 64, Zelda and Goldeneye, so I wasn't really too invested in the domestic and import libraries on the console back in the day. Going into this trip, I only really had Hybrid Heaven, Yuka Yuka, If Zero X and Gasp on my list, but I was really surprised at the prices of many of the titles, including the box versions. So I ended up grabbing a lot of other games because they were cheap and I figured they were worth a gamble. The Japanese language will probably render some of these useless as my Japanese is pretty terrible, but I've got no regrets. My Dreamcast collection is pretty set these days, but I did come to Japan with a few titles I was hunting for. I never got around to playing Seaman back in the day and this DigiCarrot box seemed kind of fun. Turns out the DigiCarrot box came from a smoker's house, so it's currently airing out in another room away from all of my other games. The Japanese copy of Crazy Taxi is here so I can retire my PAL version as it's suffering from some bit rot and I'm keen to give Della Jet Set Radio a go as it includes gameplay tweaks and extra content from the US and PAL releases while retaining the Japanese voice clips, which I'm used to because I used to always play the Japanese copy back in the day. Napple Tail was a cool 2.5D platformer I always wanted to play back in the early noughts. Godot is there because the MVS cart's a bit pricey and Sega Rally 2 is in the mix as my PAL copy is unboxed. Moving on to the GameCube and I had more luck than I was expecting. I was after the Not At All Cell Shaded Fighters as I used to love playing these with my brothers back in the day. So it was great to pick these up for surprisingly good prices. In fact, while there weren't a lot of GameCube titles around the place, the prices on the whole were a lot better than I was expecting. So I picked up Beat Spikers because I am too a rad, as well as some other licensed Dunnymare titles. The only gap here is Kirby's Air Ride that I was after, but at 6,000 yen, it was a bit more than I wanted to spend at the time. Jump Superstars was the only game I picked up for the DS, and I was very happy with the price. And the last game is Ryoga Gotoku Kenzan on the PS3. Well, hopefully that wasn't too boring. I mean, I sure also had fun unboxing everything. So while we watched the B-roll of me fastidiously cleaning old carts, I wanted to point out that if you want a more detailed rundown of where I bought the stuff in this haul, I'll link out to the specific section in the article in the description. The stuff I didn't cover in the video were the merch, toys, clothes and lollies I picked up along the way, as these came home in my luggage as gifts for my amazing family who let me run off to Japan for nearly three weeks and then had to put up with me hammering out research papers as soon as the group arrived back in Adelaide. I also grabbed a handful of Japanese LPs and EPs, which I also packed in with my luggage, as these were last minute purchases. Literally, my record shopping happened on the day before we left. Uh, if people are interested in Japanese records though, I can look at some videos on these in the future. Leave a comment, let me know. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment below or, you know, give it a thumbs up. You can check out the Anime Inferno website at animeinferno.com.au, follow us on social media and check out the description for any links I've mentioned throughout the video. Thanks guys! Bye.